What is up, Sheepdog Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Sheepdog Nation podcast with your host, me, Autumn Schmidt. I'm really excited, as always, to have you here. We are well on our way into 2019. I just realized that it's like the first week of August and my summer is gone. Is anybody else like having this realization and you're like devastated? <clears throat> I totally am. You know, I, I started thinking about this and I started thinking about how life, how quickly life, you know, goes. And I started thinking about, especially when you are, you know, a cop. I can't speak for really any other positions because that's really all I have held for a long time, other than being an entrepreneur. But I know that being a cop, life just goes, 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 and goes because we work so much overtime. Like, it's incredible the amount of overtime the average police officer works. And then when you're not working, you're just trying to survive. You're trying to get by. You're trying to catch up. You're trying to not be bothered by anybody. And you're just, you're literally just trying to get yourself together enough so that you can go and make it through your next week. Am I right? It's kind of fucked up. It's actually really fucked up that, like, we end up working. And then we end up just surviving, trying to survive to work. And we're not actually living. Isn't that insane? Do you ever feel like that? Like, do you ever feel like you aren't really living? You're just, you're working, you're sleeping, you're eating, and then you're going back to work. And the the problem here is like life is passing you by. Before you know it, you're, you know, your kids are grown and you know, before you know it, your freaking dog is old. And, um, you know, your parents, you haven't seen your parents, your family in over a year. And then it's the holidays. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. And we start taking for granted, we start, we really start um, not putting the people who have always supported us, we, we, we don't put them first, they come, they come second, everything, in fact, everything comes second to the job. You ever notice that? You ever notice that even you, you come second to the job? Do you ever feel that way? You know, I think that this is all part of what's going on as far as the epidemic that we're facing within Sheepdog Nation. I believe that we're facing an epidemic. The statistics are uh, showing us that. You hear me talk about it all the time, but you're going to continue to hear me talk about it because this is a problem and it's not something that we can just continuously sweep under the rug. This is something that we really need to address. And I'm so passionate about it. And if I'm just really honest, I think maybe I'm in your ear every day as much as I can be talking to you about this because one, I don't know exactly where to turn, but I do know that we need to start having we have more conversations about, you know, losing your self-identity, about not being able to fit in into life and to society, losing your life essentially to the job. And then eventually, you know, we, we are facing a massive epidemic of law enforcement suicides. And there's, I don't see anything being done. Yes, we have wonderful nonprofit organizations. Don't, don't get that twisted. I do see some things being done, but on a national level, you know, throughout agency to agency, we are not seeing things get taken care of. We are not seeing the change, the support that we need. In fact, it's getting worse. Just uh, today, as I'm recording this, comes on the heels of this past weekend, and we had three mass shootings in our country. And the thing is, is while that's absolutely devastating for our country and the civilians and everybody, what about what about the first responders that had to deal with that? What about the first responders that literally showed up and had to face that head on and all of the bodies that they had to deal with, all the dead bodies, the people they were trying to save, the shooters they were trying to apprehend? What about them? That's my concern. Of course, you know, everybody, you know, societies, you know, they worry about themselves and what this means and blah, blah. But I'm more concerned about you. I'm more concerned about the authors that were out there dealing with this and what kind of support they're receiving. Because... In my experience, and I can't speak for every single department and every single agency, but in my experience, the debriefing process just isn't supportive enough. And you going and talking to a shrink, it doesn't really make you feel like you uh, fit in. It doesn't really make you feel like you're one of the guys anymore. It really makes you feel like you're kind of crazy and that you are an outcast and that you've experienced things that nobody else has. So where does that leave you? 
Where does that leave you? If you've invested your entire life up until this point into the job and you've literally put your family and everything that you know on the back burner, where does that leave you? What's that leave you feeling like? I think that we need to, we need to come together. We need, we need this to be addressed. This is a problem that we need to be addressed, but I, I'm telling you, we need, it needs to be, I want you to be aware of it. I want you to know while I have your attention, here's something I want you to know. I want you to know that it's not your fault that you feel the way that you do. And I want you to know it's not your fault that the way you're living your life, if you're living it as the way that I've described it pretty, pretty close, I want you to know that it's not your fault. I want you to know that most police officers all across this world, all because I talk to officers all across the world, they're doing the same thing. They're, it, it's, it's a survival mechanism. That's what it is. In the people and the officers that are um, a little bit more aware of it, they're jumping ship. We have veteran officers that are jumping ship. Okay. What does that tell you? When a guy who's been on the road, you know, 10 years, is willing to sacrifice the retirement to get the fuck out of the job that, mm, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty significant considering if they have like a 20 year retirement, they're 10 years away from being able to technically retire. And they're like, I don't care. It's not even worth it for me. You know, th those are the things because what's going on is we have, we have a, um, an extremely high rate of suicide, police suicide. Right. So, um, just to give you some updated statistics. Um, so, Last year, we had over 156. These are reported police suicides of officers that were um, active duty that have taken their own lives. In Chicago, we have an epidemic going on. I believe the last statistic in Chicago, correct me if I'm wrong, is I believe we had seven this just this year. I know for a fact that NYPD, we had seven just this year take their lives. I know that in Philadelphia, we had... Um, it was just with, it was in the, I believe in July, we had an officer um, take their lives. We're having officers who are on duty, who are sitting in their police cruisers, who are in their uniforms, taking their lives. Now, if that is not a sign of serious hate for the agency and your coworkers, I don't know what is because that, that officer knows they all know who's going to be coming in and cleaning up that mess, right? And who's going to be dealing with that. And then how that is imprinted in our in our minds and our lives forever. You know, and and here's the thing you guys is I, I really don't believe this is I'm gonna just tell you my opinion about it. And whether we have like differing opinions or not, um, since you're listening to me, <laughs> you're gonna hear mine. My opinion is this I think that policing is old. I think the way that we're policing is has been very, very old. The newest the newest part of policing is community policing. And fuck, I learned that well over 10 years ago when I was sitting in a college classroom. So you know that's at least 15 years old, the concept of community policing. And we know, does it work? I don't know. Look at how we're all, look at how we are as a society right now. It doesn't really seem to matter, you know, how much we are, you know, acting like, you know, comedians on video to the public and, and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure if it's effective. I, I, I don't know. I don't have those statistics. I'm sure to some extent, obviously it is. I mean, you build good rapport with, you know, members of the community and they're going to tell you things. I mean, that's basic, basic policing, but I think policing as a whole is very old. We look around and um we look around at the agencies. Let's just like, look at the agency departmental uh, agencies, um, and you go in and you see how these officers are, how they're treated, how, what the environment is like for these officers. A lot of times the agencies are old. They're disgusting. They are not well kept. You know, yes, every agency probably has a janitor, but let's be honest, the janitor is old, retired. This is a, either a retired job or they're a retired cop and they give zero fucks. It is not well kept. The bathrooms are disgusting. Everything about the, you know, everything about the agency just isn't, it's not well kept. There's not, a, the computers are old or outdated. The seating for the officers are not updated. The walls are white or off white. The floors are gray. It's, um, you know, they have that blue light, you know, like, um, it's not like yellow light. Like it's not, it's like those, you know, like the lighting is, it's, 
uh, it's kind of reminds you like a doctor's office, you know, just it's not relaxing at all. These environments aren't relaxing. We're not creating environments that um, officers can flourish in. In fact, we're creating environments for officers just to continue to feel extremely stressed out. Look, when a police officer, a little bit about a police officer, um, uh, if, let me just tell you a little bit about a cop. If you, whether you are one, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about yourself or whether you aren't one, I will tell you about us is that our lives feel so out of control to us because we are literally going call to call to call to call to call. We are serving and providing services for everybody else except ourselves. Right. So we are continuously put on the back burner and then, you know, you come back and we're in an agency and, the thing is, is that like, if it's disgusting, if it's disorganized, if it feels like complete chaos there, it had so much stress, unneeded bullshit stress. And what happens is uh, most of the, like the senior officers, they're just, they have that whole deal with it mentality. The whole like, just fucking suck it up and deal with it. And there's like some, and there's some instances in police work, like we definitely do need to suck it up and deal with it. I'm not saying like we need to turn into a bunch of pansies, but I do think that we need to take a step back and we need to look at how we're policing and what's going on. I mean, it's not 30 years ago anymore. 30 years ago, the job was completely different. I mean, cops weren't getting fucking jammed up the ass. There wasn't, you know, the, the, the public wasn't out to get us as much as they are now. I mean, we have, we had an entire, you know, presidential candidacy who fucking hated us for eight years i mean that really that really is not good but how are we taking care of our people you know how are we taking care of the their environments their minds how are we nurturing them what kind of trainings are we sending them to what you know if we continuously send our officers to you know tactics training but we're not like sending them to inner tactics training like the shit they teach really are we really doing them any kind of justice look it's clear it's clear that we know how to take care of ourselves the the, the um the statistics show us that the in the line of duty deaths are less than the police suicides hello obviously we know how to take care of ourselves obviously we're going to the good trainings and we are learning how to be tactically aware and safe and you know, I think some of that could be part of, you know, to social media. And that's been a really positive influence as we're seeing all these new trainings. We're seeing guys and girls, you know, um, videotape themselves, going to BJJ, going and shooting and staying in shape and doing all these things. And so, like, I think obviously to some extent, like that's having definitely a positive impact. But what about what about our inner tactics game? What about what's going on on the inside? Where are we there? Well, where's the support there? It's not. It's non-existent. My advice to you is this. Stop blaming yourself for being a fucking mess because I guarantee you are, whether you are telling anybody or not, uh, this is from one cop to another. I get it. I totally get it. Okay. No problem. It's not your fault. And I think this is like the biggest message that I could just give anybody. It is not your fault. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, we have a lot of, we have a lot of good old boys, um, that have been in, you know, policing 20, 30 years that are in our command staff and they're not, and they're not willing to make changes. And then when we have like new run, like front, you know, runners coming in, um, and making changes, the veteran officers are really resistant to change. Very resistant. I worked for an agency whose schedule was so awful. It was four on two off, four on two off. So here, let me tell you the thing about being a a cop that, you know, I I remember getting in an all out freaking argument with my landlord one time because he was like, well, Autumn, I work five on two off, you know, like Monday through Friday and I have the weekends off like every normal citizen. I said, yeah, but you don't get it. Okay. I don't work Monday through Friday. I don't get out at fucking every day at uh, four or five on the dot ever. I'm during that period of my work week, I am working a minimum of 60 hours, not because I want to. Okay. And I need time. I need at least three days off. That first day for every police officer is literally a decompression day. It's not, it's not an enjoyable day for that officer. They may, they may look, make it look like they're enjoying that. They're completely exhausted. There's smoke. Their mind is everywhere. They're trying to reacclimate back into being a human being. And it is hard. It is damn hard. Cops need 
three days off. They need the first day to acclimate and then they need the next two days off. That is statistically proven. The four on three off is what the FBI has shown over and over and over again is the best um, schedule for cops. Second best being the two, two, three. Every other weekend off. Every other week you work two days. That's, you know, that's where we're at. I worked for an agency that was so fucked up that the veteran cop, I mean, the, the administration even entertained it. They entertained going four on three off because we proved that the FBI and the statistics and all this stuff that it'd be good for, you know, the officers. And the, the all a day shift was like, no, no, I'm not staying here an extra two hours every day to work like th- to work four 10 hour days. I'm like, listen, you fucking dumb ass. There's an overlap, number one. And number two, two hours for an entire extra day, give me it. I'm sign sign me up, right? But we have old older officers that are set in their ways and they're set in their ways and they're jaded. That's what you have to understand. They're jaded. They become jaded. They become like, fuck everybody. No, I don't trust anybody. This agency doesn't have my back. Nobody I work with has my back. I've been jammed up. I've been in IA more times than I can, you know count on both hands and I trust absolutely nobody. So you're going to try to mess with what I know right now. No, you're not. And so that's the mentality. And I'm not even saying it's their fault. Hell, they're just, they're just trying to survive too. I think we're coming to a point where all officers on the job, they're literally just trying to survive. It's no longer about getting out there, having fun, being pro having a ton of pride in what you do. And I mean, in the first few years, of course, but I'm talking, you know, seven, eight years, 10 years in, you're just trying to survive. You're just trying to survive your wife, your husband. They don't think their job is cool anymore. Everyone actually starts really resenting your job. Your kids are like, where the hell are you? You start resenting the job because you're like, damn, I need to see my kids. I need to see my family. I'm about to get a divorce or I'm on my second divorce. What the fuck, right? And so then we start, we getting into this resentment chain. And so what do we do? We cope. We, you know, shove down and we numb our emotions. And that comes either by alcohol or drugs or you know, addictions of something or maybe literally just tuning out all the time and doing things all by yourself. And, you know, you're just, you kind of just not even around anybody and it causes problems. So just to reiterate, this is why we're in the state that we're in. We need change. We need, we need to change. We need to come together. But the first thing, the first thing that we need to do is I need you to know that it's not entirely your fault. It really isn't. And so for you to walk around and just think about, think that you're like so messed up and that it's all your fault and this and that, and you know, nobody else goes through this. No, you're absolutely incorrect. Everybody else goes through this. Everybody feels exactly the way that you're feeling right now. You are not alone. You do not have new feelings. This is completely the same. You are not different. You are not not supposed to be a cop. This is how all cops feel. A lot of cops are just really good at hiding it, but the ones that are the best at hiding it are the most fucked up. I promise. And the ones you, you don't, you don't think it. And I know, but I'm telling you, they're the most fucked up. I know because they come and they reach out to me and they friggin' they just seem like they have it all together, but they just do a really good job of acting like they do, but they really don't. So understand you're not messed up. Understand it's not your fault. Understand that we have a real epidemic going on and join me as I am going, I'm literally on a mission. I want to go and I want to speak. I want to go speak around the country. I want everybody to know what's going on. I want to make changes. I'm looking to make changes. I'm looking to go places and speak. I want to host workshops and seminars. And I want, I really am, you know, looking to change the game. I'm not just sitting here. I'm not just going to sit here and give you my opinion and all this stuff. Like, no, I'm actively working with officers. I'm actively working with sheepdogs all across the world right now. If you need help, if you're like, Hey, I need some support, then you need to reach out to me. I have a program. It's ongoing. We're still in our introductory module. It's called um, how to be code Four while 10, seven, how to be normal while you're off duty. It is life changing. It is my first step in this direction of changing law enforcement as a whole, come and be with us um, right now before, you know, one, before the price goes up, but two, before your life gets any worse. I've got two slots open. We start today. We start our um, introductory um, module, third week of our introductions. We haven't even started month one yet, so I, you won't be too behind. Um, reach out to me. You can DM me at the intuitive sheepdog 
on Instagram. You can email me, autumn at autumnclifford.com. I hope that you got something out of this podcast. Let me know if you're enjoying it, and um, I will see you next time. And that was another episode of Ship Dog Nation. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes and let us know by giving us a rating. If you have questions that you want answered by Autumn in the podcast, submit it by going to the link in the show notes. As always, stay safe and watch your sixth.